Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel. So I came up with another interesting video in our Kubernetes uh, series and the topic name for today is config map. So in this particular video, we are going to understand how a config files were managed earlier and how it is managed in the Kubernetes. What is the challenges we have without a config map object of Kubernetes? and how this config map object is going to help us to uh, solve this problem, okay? And then at the end, we'll quickly see the demo as well on how to create the config map, how to use that under pod. So all this stuff we are going to cover in this video, okay? So without making any delay, uh, let's go ahead and first understand this concept, why it is required, how it is used and all stuff. So let me just uh, quickly share my screen. So, this is my whiteboard uh, where I'm going to explain the config map concept. So what is the need of this concept? So let's say uh, this is my application, right? So now let's say this application is communicating with another application. Let's say this is application two, okay? So application one wants to talk to the application, right? So now let's say while communicating, okay, or to do the communication, uh, we have to have some certificates, okay, some uh, client cert, okay, or some uh, the host name, okay, or some port where I need to communicate, right? So this kind of a data I need before I communicate with this particular service, right? So if that is the case, what is the simplest option I had that is just to, hard code this data into this application code, okay, application one code. But what, what is the challenge we have if we just hard code it? So the challenge we have is, if we need to change any host details or a port, what we need to do is, we need to change this, rebuild the code, redeploy it. So it's a very time consuming process to do that, okay, if you want to change any of these details, right? So that is where we come up with a concept called as a config file, okay? So in this config file, we can just go ahead and put all this content here. And then in our application code, we can have a uh, code which know how to read the file, uh, read the content or config data from this config file, right? So if you have this, what we are doing is we are kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, removing the tight coupling between the config data and application, right? We are just separating it so that if we put this config data here and application reads it, okay, then application can use that data and continue, right? Continue connecting to other service. But if you need to change it, you can just simply change the config file and then restart the application so that application can read the new changes from this. So you don't need to rebuild and all that stuff we don't need to do, right? So that was the benefit we get it uh, if we use the config file, right? So this is something we know that, right? Almost everyone nowadays, uh, every application will have a config file, right? But now uh, we are using a containerization, right? So we already talked about a containerization concept. So in a containerization concept, what we do, if you want to containerize your any application, what we need to do is, first of all, we need to write a, a Docker file, right? In this Docker file, we'll write, okay, what menu is we need, uh, what app, what is the application source code, install all the dependencies. Okay, then you're copy the complete application code. Okay, and in that code, your application code as well as the config file, everything will be copied here. And then the remaining instruction. From this, we'll build a image. Okay, then this image, we will push it to some registry. Okay, and then from there, we will pull that and we'll create a pod, right? So this is the procedure that we need to follow it right now, right? So now we are kind of came back to the same problem, right? What we are facing it here when we hard code this config data, right? So what is the challenge here? Like, let's say you copied your application code as well as config file, we build the image, we push that image to registry and pull it and create the port, right? But if you need to change it, what you need to do? Again, change your config file, okay? Then if there's any change required in the Docker file, do it. If not, rebuild the image, 
because we need to take that new change config file, right? So rebuild the image, re-push it to the registry, re-pull it and restart the pod to get that new image, right? So we are kind of running into the same problem that we had, right? It's a, a basically a tight coupling between your config and inside that image, right? So if you need to change it, you have to go through all this process again. So that's the problem statement we have. Okay, that's the problem that we are facing. Now to solve this problem exactly, we have a config map object. Okay, so let's see now how config map is going to solve this problem. So now there are basically uh, two ways to create a config map. Okay, we have two ways to create a config map. And also we have two ways to use that config map inside a pod, right? So if you have only uh, one or two config data, you can just simply uh, by using a from literal option, okay, we can just create that config map. How to create that config map? I'll, I'll show you that practically. It's very simple. So if you have one or two config data, just by using a from literal option, create that and then expose that config data as a environment variable into the pod. Okay, so that's the complete one way we have. Another way we have is if you have multiple key value pair as a config data. So instead of using a first way for multiple key values, better way is you just create one config file. Okay, create one config file inside that, put all your key value, whatever you have. And then mount this, okay, mount this file as a volume inside a box. Okay, so now if we do this, what benefit we are getting is basically if you have to change it, just change this config map. You don't need to change any image. Okay, you don't need to touch the image. If you need to change, just change this config maps and then restart the pod. As soon as we restart the pod, it will just take this modified config, right? So that's how your config map is going to help us to remove that tight coupling between your config file and your code, right? So now let's see how we can do it practically, okay? We'll see both this way of creating a config map as well as both the ways to use that inside a pod. Perfect, so let's go to our setup. So I have already a, a Kubernetes cluster created and I have set this Ilias to avoid typing QCTL again and again. So my cluster is ready. So if you want to see, if there is any config map already available, you can use kubectl get config map. Okay, CM is a short name for config map. So here you will see that there is a one default config map already available. So that's fine. That that will be there as soon as you create a cluster. So let's create our own config map. Now we have two ways. So let's use the first way, right? So how to do that? kubectl create. What do you want to create? A config map. What is the config map name? Let's say myc. Okay, and then this is the first way, so we have to use that from literal option. So you sit here, create config map, my CM, hyphen hyphen from literal is equal to, let's say our config map key value is simply, let's say a uh, DB host is equal to, let's say 192.168.0.2, let's say that's the IP. Okay, so if you have another key value, you can use another from literal option. From literal is equal to, let's say DB port, let's say 800. So this is how if you have maybe one or two config data, it's a better to use or create a config map like this and then use this as an environment variable. So let's create it. So you can see it got created. If you want to see how it looks like, you can use a kubectl describe command. So kubectl describe the config map my C. So if you run this, here you can see the data, the db port, db port. So this is the first way of creating a config map. Now, let me just quickly show you how we can create by using a file, right? So if you have multiple key value, instead of doing or instead of creating something like this, it's a better to put it in a one file. Let's say I'll just create one myconfig.ini. Extension can be anything, right? Myconfig.properties, myconfig.inis, or whatever. Usually, uh, ini.properties.cfg. These are the extensions that we have for uh, any type of config file, right? So here I'm using an INI, okay? And then let's use some key value. Let's say a log file is equal to, let's say my app.log. Then what else? Let's say a DB port uh, 8000, right? Or uh, 
DB host, let's say local host. Like this, you have a lot of configuration data and you added into this file, okay? And then from this file, we can create a config map. Let's do that. So kubectl create config map, my cm1, this time I'm giving some different name, and then you can use from file equal to, this is the file that we have just now created, my config. Data. So if I do this, you can see my uh, config, my cm1 got created. So let's describe it, kubectl describe config map my cm1, and you can see whatever we have in the my config.ini, we are able to see, okay? So this is how we can create the config map. Now let's create a pod by using this data. So how to create it? Maybe let me just quickly by using an imperative command, I'll generate one pod.yaml. So how to do that? kubectl run nginx hyphen hyphen image is equal to nginx hyphen hyphen port, it runs on the AT. And then I'll use a dry run is equal to client hyphen oyaml and redirect it to the pod.yaml. Okay, so this is how our typical pod.yaml will look like. So now we have two different ways to use that config map, okay? First way is if we have created a config map using a from literal option, in that case, we can use an environment variable. So env, and now env, we can have a multiple environment variable. So that's a list. So we can give some name to that environment variable. Let's say db host is my environment variable, okay? db host. Usually, in, as a standard environment variable, we keep it in capital letters. That's why I have used. But even if you use a small, it will work, okay? And then if you have a direct value, you can add it, okay? But now we don't have a direct value. We want to read the value from a config map. So how to do that? Value from where we can specify a config map key reference, okay? That's the attribute we have, okay? Where we can specify the name of the config map that's a my cm and the key from where we want to read the value that's a db host so we have this db host key available in our uh, config map and that's what we are reading it okay so that's how we can basically expose our config data as an environment variable okay so if you have multiple you just need to duplicate this section with a different key here okay and different environment variable right so for now one is fine and then another way, right? If you want to expose your config map as a volume. So how to do that? First of all, at pod level, you have to create the, uh, at pod level, you have to create the volume. So how to create a volumes? We have a volumes attribute, okay? Where we can give, provide some name to the volume. Let's say a uh, my wall. And then now we want to create this volume from the config map. So for that, we have to use the attribute called as a config map and then the name of the config map. What is the name of our config map? My CM1. Okay. So this is how it is going to create a volume. And to use this volume, we have another attribute called as a volume mounts. Okay. This attribute has that at the container level where we can provide the name of the volume. So name of the volume that we have created is a my ball. Okay. And then we have to attach this volume inside the pod. So what will be that mount path? Okay, usually get we get that mount path from the developer that, okay, this is where my application is going to read the config, uh, config data, right? So that mount path we need to provide, mount path, okay? So let's say that path can be anything. Let's say I'm giving etc. Lal. Even if path doesn't exist, it will create. Perfect, so this is how it is going to mount it. So let's create this pod and let's see if we are able to see this DB host environment variable as well as under etc lala, do we see this uh, config file that we created? Okay, so let me just save this and let me see if we have any pod running now. So let's create it. So kubectl apply hyphen f pod.yaml. So if everything is correct, whatever attributes we have given, your pod will get created. So it looks good from our end. So kubectl get pod, it's getting created. So let's wait for that pod to be uh, ready. And once that pod is in ready, we'll go inside it. So let's uh, log in inside the pod. So kubectl exec hyphen it, our pod name is nginx and the bash. So now I'm inside the pod, right? So let's see if environment variable got exposed, right? So if you want to see the environment variables, we use an env command, that's a Linux command. So you can see here, a db host got exposed. Whatever value you have given while creating config map, 
that's what exactly we got it here. Okay. And then what else? We mounted our volume on the etc lala. So if you go to that directory and do ls, whatever file we created, the exact file we got it here. Okay. Even if you want to see that. Here you can see whatever we have in the myconfig.ini, we have used while creating a config map, exactly same data we have available on that particular mounted. Okay, so that's how we basically create a config map and use it. Okay, so just to recap what we have seen, first of all, we have seen why the config file got introduced. Then we have seen that what challenges we are facing without config file, then why we have introduced config file, what benefit we get it with the config file, okay? Then we talked about what challenges we have in the containerization, right? Like what, if you need to change the con, because we copy the config file into the image. So if you have to change that config file, you have to go through the whole process of building image, then pushing it, pulling it, and then creating the pod. So to avoid this problem, Kubernetes provides an, another object called as a config map. So that's what we have seen. Like, okay, there are two ways to create a config map and there are two ways to expose, right? So I hope everyone uh, understood this config map concept. So that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you like the video, if you, please uh, subscribe the channel. If you are not subscribed, please share it with your friends. And uh, that's it for this video. So thanks everyone again. Uh, see you in another interesting video soon.